If you use Foundry VTT, you need these modules. I've been using Foundry since 2020 for obvious reasons. I found that these particular modules that I'll be sharing with you are ones that I literally cannot live without while using Foundry. Most of these are quality of life things, but some of these are actually pretty useful for your players and for yourself as a DM. So let's dive right in. The first one we're going to talk about is a module called Pop Out. You're on any screen at all. You can pop out whatever window you're looking at into a separate window. So now you can have your character sheet on one side of your screen and the tabletop on the other side of the screen. This is especially useful for your players, but I found it useful even as a DM to keep my notes on the one side while having everything else on the other side. It's also very useful for those of us who are used to two screens. Next we have chat notifications. If I ask a player, which I have on the right here, to make a roll, they can do so. And then on my screen on the left, even if I don't have the chat up, I can see what they roll or what they're saying right on the screen without me having to flip back and forth. This is particularly useful if you're like me and you like to multitask while you are DMing and you're looking for something or changing the music and still want the players to keep doing what they're doing. Next we have turn marker. This does exactly what it sounds like. If I start a combat state and everybody rolls, once I hit begin combat, it'll actually highlight the player who is up first. It has a lot of cool features. You can change the way it looks, the animation, and those kinds of things. I just kind of leave it as is because it's pretty much good. Torch is another very useful module, especially if you have humans in your party. Super simple. You can right click on a character and there'll be a little fire icon in the top left corner. You'll click on that and it'll automatically give them the stats for a torch and then suddenly your human players can see. Next is a series of dice related modules. The first one is called Dice So Nice. This is literally for all the dice goblins. Originally Foundry didn't have a lot of options for dice and rolling dice. With the Dice So Nice module you have a ton of options. You can download different types of dice and have special effects for your dice and it's really just a way for those of us who love and miss rolling physical dice to still get our fix. You can even add special effects for natural ones and natural 20s, but it's also just nice to hear that click clack while at a virtual table. The next module we have is called Dice Tray. This puts a little tray at the bottom right hand side of your screen that allows you to very quickly roll whatever dice your DM is asking for. So if I need to roll a d20, you can just do that. If a DM says roll a d6, you can do that. You can even roll a whole bunch of them all at one time. This next one is definitely a quality of life thing but also something that I think Roll20 people would really appreciate. So if you have players are used to Roll20, they will absolutely love this. This also helps minimize the number of clicks. So let me show you. With this module turned off, your players have a lot of clicks to make. So if I asked this player to make an acrobatics check, when they click on it, they then have to click whether they want advantage, normal, or disadvantage. They can also pick which role they want, if they want to share it just with the DM, a private role for them, or a public role. This is a lot of clicks just to roll one dice. This is the same if you have to make a roll for an attack. When you click on an attack, it then pops it up into the chat window. From there, you have to go ahead and click attack. From there, you choose advantage or disadvantage or normal. And then from there, you can also roll the damage, whether that's a natural 20 or just a normal hit. And it's quite a few clicks. With the better rolls for 5e module, however, you don't have all those extra clicks. If I ask Eli to make an acrobatics check, she can go ahead and roll and it'll roll her two dice. The first roll being a normal roll and the second one being whether it's advantage or disadvantage. This also helps with attack. If we roll her on arm strike, it will go ahead and roll not only two dice, but it also rolls 
the damage die for you. And if that wasn't enough for you, you can very quickly apply the damage to whoever you need to. So say she was attacking Gale for no apparent reason. I could go ahead and click this, um, and it would apply the full damage to him. You'll see he takes nine damage and he has a little bit less health. Alternatively, if he had a resistance or anything of that nature, you could apply a quarter of the damage to that person or half damage to that person. You could apply double the damage. You can also add healing to that person, so we'll give them back their nine HP. This is one of the better modules for Foundry, and it is definitely a quality of life one that I recommend for everyone. Next we have the module called Let Me Roll That For You. This is especially useful if you have players who are new to Foundry or if you have a player who just has never learned where anything is in Foundry. This lets you cut down on that wait time and prompt them for a roll. On the left I have the DM's view, on the right I have the player's view. For the DM, you'll go to the little people icon and you'll see a d20 right here. You're going to click that to request a roll. You can select everybody or you can select just the individuals that you need to roll. Uh, we're going to select Eli because that's the character I have up on the right here. You can change all of these settings if you want. Um, you can ask them to roll at advantage or disadvantage or have it prompt them to choose whether they want to roll an advantage, normal, or disadvantage. And then down here is where you actually pick the type of roll you are requesting. So it could be an ability check, which is just like a straight roll for any of your six stats. You can do saving throws and you can do skill checks. We're going to ask for an acrobatics chess check, then you'll hit request rolls. It'll pop up a button for them to choose. They can just go ahead and click skill check acrobatics. It'll roll their dice for them. Again, I have the module that lets them roll two dice automatically, and then you can go from there. It's a very quick and easy way to help your players find what they're looking for on their character sheet. Next, we have ambient doors, which literally just adds sound to doors. <laughs> That's it. Just sounds. There's also some awesome music packs that you can add. There's the Michael Gelfi Studios audio pack, which he also provides a bunch of different musical tracks to his patrons. There's also tabletop RPG music, which has a bunch of free playlists and music that are on here. So this can be anything from ambient sound to like a soundboard. Uh, so if you get into battle, you can go ahead and just play that music right in Foundry. It really adds a whole nother bit of atmosphere to your maps and your game. The other two modules I'm going to talk about are simply for importing. If you use something like D&D Beyond to create characters, which is often a lot easier for new players or people who haven't made characters before, since it does walk you through pretty, pretty nicely, you can very easily import a character. You can do this pretty simply by creating a new actor. Don't worry about naming it, but make sure it's a player. Then hit this D&D Beyond button, and you'll go to D&D Beyond, copy and paste the link, make sure your character is pretty well filled out. Then you'll go, drop your URL right here, you'll start your import. It'll even prompt you for resource tracking. It'll go about importing everything from D&D Beyond into Foundry. You can also do things like import your companions or update D&D Beyond from any changes that you made in Foundry. But you'll be able to at see all of your characters right from D&D Beyond. These are all of the characters for this one shot and you can see I imported all of them pretty easily. Lastly, there's Universal Battle Map Importer. If you use any map maker like Dungeon Draft, you're going to need this to import everything into Foundry. That's how I imported this entire map here. That included all of the walls, the lighting, the windows, the doors. 
It will definitely prevent you from having to do duplicate work, and also Foundry's Map Maker has some lackluster features, so this allows you to really get creative with your map making. There are so many more modules out there. These are just the ones that I have found super helpful that I thought might help you. If you think there's something I should try, drop it in a comment down below. I also have links to all of these modules down in the description so that you can check them out for yourself. Foundry has a lot of great stuff, but its map maker it could use a little work. That's why I use Dungeon Draft, which I have a whole video here where I show the entire process of me taking a pre-made map and recreating it virtually in Dungeon Draft and importing it into Foundry. So check this one out if you're interested in Dungeon Draft and want to learn a little bit about that before you go ahead and purchase it. And I will see you guys in the next video.